Hello, my beautiful Libra friends, and welcome to your horoscope for December of 2020, our last one, our last monthly, anyways, of the year, so it's kind of special in its own way. So whether you are new here, and if you are new, welcome, or you've been with me for years, or just this year, I just want to say thank you so much for letting me provide some guidance and astrology to you this year or at this time, and thank you so much for um, showing up for me as well. It's it's special when we get to the end of the calendar year, and, and we'll revisit our journey again again when we get to the end of the astrological year. But for now, let's just talk about December. So Libra this month, the Eat and Greets are continuing on. We've got Patricia Walsh coming. Kira Sutherland will be here. Linda Bird, Sally Ducharme, Ali Gully. Uh, Peter Burns will be here talking about astrology and reading palms, which is really cool. Victor Oliver will be here to talk about dragonic astrology. So fascinating. Uh, Rose Marcus will be here. So it is a busy, beautiful month. Michael Bartlett, lots going on. And remember, you can always catch the Eat and Greets absolutely ad free when you join me on patreon which the patreon is growing as well so more content will be available exclusively to you as a patreon member all of that's in the description box down below okay all right libra let's get in here and talk about what's going on this month now you have a heavy third house focus this month and as we get to the end of the month we'll shift a little bit into that fourth house energy but the third house especially coming into this month so thinking decision making, communication, gadgets, cars, um, technological things, all of these things are really heavy for you. Now, I also think things that have to do with education, but this is like um, lower education. So if you're your college or beyond that, not that educational path, but anything that has to do with lower education, high school or below, or maybe you're even teaching it in some way, that is a really big focus for you this month or the people in your life who have those things going on. You know, let's just say it's the children or something like that or somebody studying um, in high school. There could be some severe changes in their educational plan or structure or something like that and then you're impacted by it, okay? But either way, know that the intellectual pursuits is what's really, really heavy for you as we're coming into this month where we're gonna have two long-term planets move and eclipse. So this is the setup for 2021 and it's really kicking off with heavy third house vibes for you this month okay so right as we come into the month we see mercury who is naturally quite comfortable in the third house anyways but entering into the energy of sagittarius now on the 14th we've got a new moon solar eclipse and this is also going to be in the third house and later in the month um, venus will join this third house area as well so you see the third house has just got some busy 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 to it mercury here is making adjustments making decisions lots of conversation it's pretty confident it's pretty self-confident in the energy of Sagittarius but it is definitely expanding Sagittarius or bringing foreign matters of study communication or information into your life as well on the 13th Mercury is going to go out of bounds so what that means is in your communication, things with your siblings, in your decision-making, contracts, all of the things that live in the third house, you may be having to go out of bounds or they seem like they are out of bounds in your interaction with them. Your normal spheres and circles of doing things are not going to fit the bill. So be prepared to maybe have that conversation that you wouldn't normally have with somebody outside of your zone you know if you want to sign a contract you want to start a lease you want to buy or you want to sell a property look outside of where you would normally look because the answer will be waiting for you right there this eclipse that happens on the 14th is going to be a new moon solar eclipse so you're going to plant your seeds of intention here and this area of your life will blossom out over the next six months now let's just say too in this third house something you were wanting to do was to teach or to present information or something like that or the podcasting or your web website or a blog, writing a book, any of those things, if that's what you're looking for, plant those seeds of intention right here and we'll watch them blossom as we get into 2021, okay? On the 15th, it's a bit of a busy day. We've got Chiron, who has been retrograde in the energy of Aries coming direct. Now in the energy of Aries, it's of course in the opposite, just right across the street from you. So we know it lights up your seventh house space. Now Chiron is the energy of our wounded healer. We know this, we've hurt this way. So it's actually, and Instead of just being that wound and that hole in our soul, it actually becomes where we can teach from 
as well. We can help people um, come to the other side of their, their issues with this as well. In the energy of Aries, we've been re-looking at the identity. What is your identity in your relationships, right? What is your principles that guide your identity in relationships? And that's one-on-one -on -one relationships. So that could be romantic. That could be how do you deal with open enemies? How do you deal with business partners, contracts? How do you show up in it? What guides this very Aries energy, your desires here, and how you're doing things? Because as Chiron is out of retrograde, this is our indicator that it's time to be that helper, but it's also time to start showing up in that identity that you wish to form and you wish to have um, guiding you forward. So, you know, I also think that in some way what's had to happen with that energy because it's Aries, because it's Mars, and you're naturally a Venetian energy, which is also in opposition to this, is that you've had to get clear this year on some different um, internal compass settings that are important to you, those principles that you really ground down into that are valuable to you you've really had to get those reset so now as Chiron's out of retrograde you can start to really live that in your current reality I think it's beautiful and you'll help other people to do that as well also on the 15th is when we have Venus moving into that energy of Sagittarius so third house this could even be finances or relationships coming towards you you're magnetized in this third house area so you know somebody comes and says I can help you with that blog or would you like to teach this would you like to learn this and maybe even some money comes in with it as well or the right kind of relationships and connections either way Venus is looking to bring a harmony here so let's just say because it is Sagittarius you had a court situation going on Venus is bringing a harmony to this particular area as well so that maybe the temperature of that court case can get turned down a little bit and it can get moving forward. Either way, Venus is showing up in benefic form to be here for you under that energy, okay? On the 17th, we see Saturn moving into the energy of Aquarius. This is going to light up your fifth house space. So we've had Saturn working on your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, um, your own psychological well-being for the last two and a half years years and now it's going to move on and this is your setup for what you'll work on for the next two and a half years. But I also want to bring you Libra to the question of what happened for you between March and July when Saturn took that first touch into the energy of Aquarius. Besides a big old pandemic, when you were thrown into your home and you were thrown into this different communal social distancing time, what was happening for you in your fifth house? How did your joy change? How did your self-expression change? What changed for your children? What changed in... in um, where you'd like to take a risk in how you'd like romance to be a part of your life. Because Saturn is going to come to crystallize those lessons for you now, which is not Saturn being this heavy taskmaster. It's saying it's time to take this area of your life to the next level, right? But also, if you've been putting in the work, Saturn's going to come and deliver your blessings, your rewards, your accolades in this particular area as well. So just know, though, kind of flash back to what happened at the beginning of the year and see, because it would have shown you what was out of whack a little bit or where you can be successful. And now you'll continue that journey here. And on the 19th, Jupiter is going to come into the energy of Aquarius. So while Saturn is trying to make it firm and crystallize it down and give it some structure in this area, Jupiter is coming to expand this area as well, which if you are single and you feel like I am ready, I have done the work, I am ready to welcome something into my life romantically, I'm ready to welcome in, um, you know, maybe even a full family. Jupiter is going to expand this particular area under the Aquarian influence to allow that to come into your life. He'll expand your willingness to take a risk have that joy, have that play in your life. Think of things that you can put out and give to the world. It's really a very creative energy. I will tell you that here in December, I have this sense for you though, if a new romance does blow in here in December, give it some time. Give it some time to blossom because this might also be just kind of like a short-term blow-in that happens for you. So if you're gonna, if it does happen and you want to invest, just give it some time. And I'll tell you my experience is that relationships begun under a Saturn transit if they can make it two years they can pretty much survive whatever comes for you guys moving forward so just a little information to know about that on the 20th mercury is going to enter into the energy of capricorn so now we've got Mercury here working in this fourth house zone, home, family, real estate, property, your internal um, structures, your psychological foundation in here, what makes you feel secure. And you're making decisions. You're having conversations here. Maybe this is even conversations with authority figures. So parents, bosses, 
um, your own ideas. Maybe you are your own authority figure, right? But in the home zone. So now Mercury, as it comes here, is going to make sure you're being productive, that you're organized so that you can achieve very Capricornian energy. You're bringing your ideas of all of that. You're bringing your conversations about that together. If you needed to have conversations about things happening for parents or family members, and they're quite serious, you would be doing that, I think, at this point in the month moving forward as well. Especially because on the 21st, we've got a big busy day. We've got the sun moving now into the energy of Capricorn, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. So lots of motivation, lots of movement into this Capricorn area, which is your fourth house. But the questions are going to be around, are you being successful? Are you being productive? Are you being serious in this area so that it creates a nice solid foundation for you? But that sun into Capricorn is also our indicator in your fellow um, cardinal energy that we're starting a solstice. So whether it is a winter or a summer, summer solstice for you depending on where you live in the world this is our indicator that this area now has a fresh start you just had Saturn and working on this area for the last couple years you're prepared to make these next level decisions in this particular area or handle whatever the universe has got to throw at you under this particular influence but in the next four weeks you'll firm up home okay whatever that looks like for you now, as we are also here on the 21st, we've got the great Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. They come together in this energy of Aquarius. So literally creating your great mutation, your great shift, your great change in this area of your joy, your self-expression, children, romance, taking a big risk, pleasure, allowing pleasure into your life, your Venetian ruled. Are you having pleasure? But this is going to be the setup for you where you move from something being so grounded into that air energy what ideas do you have that give life to this area declare them work on them and if you are over the age of 30 you know look back 20 years ago what was happening in your life because this is a similar shifting energy but it's in a different element right now but it is certainly a great mutation where you and we and us especially in the social world become something different so we make a space for you to show up and take a risk and have that joy and have that expression in a way that it didn't fit before so it really is a welcoming for you in this particular energy, okay? Now, as we close out the month, Libra, we're going to close with a full moon happening in the energy of Cancer. This is going to light up your 10th house space, so tip top of the chart for you, okay? So it says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged or adjusted so working your working life, your reputation, what you're known as, what we know you for, what we see you give back is going to be under some flux. There needs to be an adjustment that happens here. And really the question under cancer is, are you being nurtured? Are you secure? And are you nourished in this particular area of your life? So maybe this could even lead to, you know, I think sometimes you have to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. If you have to have a falling out with a boss or an authority figure in your life or a parent, and it leads to this change that happens and, and maybe even a marriage. Yeah, that's fair. Um, it could definitely be something like that as well, but it is just trying to bring the shift to this area. Now, also under the full moon, because cancer is a cardinal energy, we don't always give it its cred, right? Under a cardinal energy, you could be seen. So this could be the time where you become seen in that tip top part of your chart. You're not hidden anymore. So if you've been doing the work, you have something you want to put out, you want to nurture, you want to cancer in some way, you maybe become a parent. Um, this could be the energy under which that full moon allows you to be seen under a lot of great, great, great light. So I think it's really a beautiful month. It's very movable. We get to move things forward. It's the perfect setup for you to get an idea right here of what you're going into 2021 working with and who are kind of the, the players on your chessboard and where they are as we trudge forward into this year. And trudge means to walk with purpose, okay? All right, my beautiful Libra friends, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you. And I look forward to walking through 2021 with you every month, every week, okay? Bye, my friends.